Hello everyone. In this session, we'll discuss something called as assembly. Uh, and what do you mean by assembly? Is basically it is a single unit of deployment, it's just the you know single line of definition. But, but this should be in kudos, the single unit of deployment. It's because you had seen program execution in .NET. We had something called as .exe or .dll. Okay, according to the compiler, uh, compile and executed the project. So we have output is in terms of .exe and that .exe that executable file if you copy it and paste it some to some other computer it will run. So .NET gives you a single unit it means one exe for deployment can be deployed from anywhere it doesn't need anything. So this is a single unit of deployment okay so it is it, it consists of uh, collections of we can have a collection of data uh, and uh, sorry collection of code basically collection of code and metadata it consists of that uh, okay and how many if you if I say uh, what are the assemblies in in dot net uh, you can basically say there are there are two types not types actually but there are two assemblies that we can uh, we can say that that I that exist in dot net one is dot exe another one is dot dll well this exe is an executable and this is dynamic link library uh, this is not executable this is something like it's just there so this is dynamic and this one is static this also is very important this is static and this one is dynamic so it consists of a either executable file or or, or DLL it's specifically used for it can be used for deployment uh, deployment it can be used for versioning or it can be or it can be used for something called as security okay um, security will deal with this particular term with the help of this DLL in our later sessions but understand that uh, this there are two types of assemblies we have not types but there are two assemblies in dot net there are two assemblies in dot net sorry for typos so we having exe and dll dll is static and dll is dynamic Use for deployment, versioning, and security. So uh, assembly consists of uh, assembly contains basically. It contains one as manifest, and uh, and another is and other is uh, the code itself or the program code itself. Okay. So it can contain it, it containing uh, assembly contains. Sorry, <laughs> assembly contains manifest and the program source code basically. Okay, um, in a larger term or in a broad term, you can say uh, the content of assembly, assembly content. If I say the content in a broader term, it can be a manifest that, I, that we talked about, and then it can be type or uh, you can say metadata, then it, it consists of MSI code. Uh, that we had seen in uh, the program execution in .NET, and there are a set of resources are there. Set of resources can be anything like uh, we having, uh, let's say, uh, bitmap images, or you can say JPG file, or like that, or any other DLL or any other you know the third party thing that you want to include in your project. So it contains manifest and the program source code and more. Precisely in a broader term, it contains uh, the content should be the manifest, metadata, MSL code, and set of resources can be bitmap or JPEG images. So this is this is uh, known as assembly. But when I go for you know uh, more broader term, how many types of assemblies are there? Basically, there are there are two types. Uh, sorry, there are three types actually. There are three types of assemblies. Uh, one is strong name assembly another one is uh, how do you do this I mean yeah, yeah so another one is private assembly and the next one is uh, shared assembly okay so these are the three types that uh, you know uh, these 
uh, three types of assemblies the dot net you know included so strong name assembly private assemblies and shared assembly uh, we can discuss these two assemblies because they are pretty much simple uh, these private assemblies and shared assemblies private assembly is something like you know it is it is used only by a single application or a single executable so if you attach uh, if you're having single application and you are including one dot dll then this dll this dll that is included in this exe or you can say this single application if i say here dot exe so when you create this particular dll for this particular exe then this dll will work with this exe only only and only this is private assembly we are talking about this private assemblies but when this dll is built uh, for the sake of many types of assemblies then uh, this can be said this this can be said as a shared assembly or shared dll okay it can run on any exe that is meant for okay Wh whosoever uh, you know add reference this dll to his exe so private assembly it is used by only a single application if you have created dll containing information uh, about business logic or something like that then the, this particular you know dll will work on that particular exe only but when i call when i say a shared assembly then those assemblies that are uh, or you can say it is used for multiple application okay multiple sing not single application if i say here for shared assembly if i say then it should be like multiple application this is shared assembly and private assembly it's a single application okay it's pretty simple to understand it i think okay now if we if we if we talk about strong name assembly this is somehow uh, I'll, I'll take this assembly in a very broader term uh, but first understand that where exactly this assembly resides okay there is a specific location in windows uh, where this assembly resides and we call it as a folder name as GAC. GAC is Global Assembly Cache. Okay, so there it contains th these assemblies, this .exe and .dll. So if you go to this location, uh, if you go to this location, C, then go to Windows, and then go to Microsoft.net, and if you're having assembly. And then specifically, we having GAC 32, GAC 64, and GAC MSI. If we go to this GAC MSI, we can see there are many libraries. This is my actual library. So there are many libraries. If I click inside, you can see we having version 4.0 because we are using Visual Studio 2010 with .NET Framework 4.0. We having version of DLL that is 10.0.0.0, and this is a public key token. Okay, if I double click, you can see Microsoft Visual Studio SharePoint.dll. So this is the location where uh, this particular DLL uh, resides. I can uh, I just copy this here so that you can understand. Just remove uh, this one. This is the uh, DLL name. So this is the location where this global assembly cache, you know, is there, and we can save our assemblies inside this folder. <clears throat> okay so this is it and then we'll understand uh, how to you know save these assemblies uh, into the this GAC folder we have uh, we have Visual Studio tool and the tool name is something called as uh, GSC util GSC util dot exe <clears throat> so this is the tool uh, used to save these assemblies into the GAC folder <clears throat> okay, excuse me. I hope I hope you understand it that uh, this is the gacutil.exe which is used to save these assembly into this gac folder. And, and now we'll understand we 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 seen private and shared assembly and now we'll understand what we mean by strong name assembly. So if I go for a strong name assembly strong name assembly is basically it is it is a hash token it is a hash token that contains uh, that basically contains you can say the assembly identity identity uh, in terms of uh, it is having one name that is assembly name 
can be having version number we had seen this version number and then it also having culture and also the public key token okay and sometimes it is having digital signature so strong name assembly is, is a hash token that contains assembly identity and assembly identity what type of assembly identities can be name version culture and public key token okay keep that in mind that if you want to save your assemblies into the gag folder the assembly that should be in the gag folder is only the strong name assembly you cannot save your assembly i mean you can save but you should the recommendation is something like you should save only strong name assemblies into the gag folder okay so in your gag folder only the strong name assembly is going to be saved and it is a hash token that contains assembly identity and we we can see this identity by going to your c drive okay I go to a windows and specifically they have in the assembly folder you can see the assembly folder you click there and you will see assembly name which is this one and then the version you can see 3.0 2.0 2.16 0.0 this is version and then we having culture a culture it can be in the language you can see this this is in terms of english and then i think english is there so the, yeah we having different types of languages here so uh, these are j a k o russian many languages so this is basically the language and they ha they have public key token in terms of here public key token different 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 uh, you know tokens or you can say uh, the uh, public key uh, has been given and assigned to these uh, assemblies okay so this is your strong name assembly <coughs> So why this uh, strong name assembly is used? I mean, wh wh what do we uh, get from this? Is basically it is it gives a security engine. You can say the CLR and how security can work here is uh, as you can see it gives you the hash token. Okay, now I, I hope that you understand what do you mean by hash token. If not, that's okay. Uh, but let's understand this. So. Uh, so you had definitely seen the program execution and program execution in dotnet is like you're having one language or more precisely if i go and give you the image uh, program execution in dotnet yeah so we're having this and we take yeah this one i think this will work okay so we have this image you can see we having C sharp source file and it gives to the C sharp compiler it gives the output here exe or DLL. Uh, this is the you know this is the process that program execution uh, uh, that .NET you know do their work here but in terms of strong name assembly some other uh, aspects come over some other block comes uh, comes and exists it's something like you are having C sharp source file and it also added one more block here that is known as key so if I go here uh, so instead of language here okay language is there but let's say you're having C sharp code but it's not only the code we have to embed something called as key here or you can say the key pair pair in terms of public and private so you're having C sharp code plus or you can say the it embed the key pair okay key pair and then this complete block this complete block goes to the compiler not only the not only the C sharp code goes the complete block goes to the compiler more precisely uh, the C sharp compiler and then it gives you the output in terms of dot exe but you see here it, it is not going to be the single application or the single dot exe it also gives you something called as hash code okay so instead of C sharp code we are giving C sharp code plus key pair and it goes to the compiler to give you the dotnet application plus some hash code now this hash code will uh, going to be you know your security uh, aspect here because when you give this dot uh, dotnet application plus hash code uh, to some uh, you can say it you save this complete thing over the internet you upload it and some other entity or some other person download this file so so he or she is having your dotnet application plus hash code so he will match or he will calculate the hash code and he will match if this hash code matches with the original one 
then your dot exe file doesn't you know it is not uh, the integrity of this dot exe is going to be maintained if not then somehow someone had changed the or altered your source code and embed uh, some malicious uh, code inside your application so this can be done so this is for security aspects security engine you can say so he matches the hash code if the hashes are equal then your exe is the original one if your hashes are not matches then your exe is altered or you can say someone had done some malicious thing inside this exe so this is very very important uh, in terms of uh, you know security engine and therefore we are using strong name assemblies okay uh, so I hope you understand it one more thing that I need to clear over here so we having this GAC util uh, uh, GAC util for saving this say to save this strong name assembly into the GAC folder but how do we get this how do we get this key pair is 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 with the help of another visual studio tool and this tool name is strong name okay and in command prompt we will write sn dot exe with the help of this we can generate key pair okay and this GAC util is used to save strong name assembly into the GAC folder so the, these are the two tools that you need to remember uh, for the sake of this complete uh, you know, assembly video thank you so much I hope you understand it thank you so much